Hello listeners and viewers. Welcome to Kaduna State Ministry of Education radio and TV e-learning program designed for our SS3 and other students staying at home due to the coronavirus pandemic. The present administration under the able leadership of His Excellency Malam Nasir Ahmed El Rufai is positioned as always to ensure that under his leadership our students are not left behind in all areas of human endeavors especially education. Kaduna State is the center of learning. Therefore, we want to ensure that our students excel in their forthcoming examinations and beyond. Students and other learners at home are given this opportunity in order to continue learning as education is a continuous process. Different subjects will be taught in this program to assist students to perform excellently in the forthcoming senior school certificates examination being conducted by NECO and WAEC as soon as schools reopen. Teachers making presentations will always provide their names and phone numbers during each presentation and they can be contacted for questions, further explanations and or clarifications. The following numbers and contacts can also be reached for expression of any concern or observation. 090-865-0054 090-865-0054 36072. Our website is www.education.kdsg.gov.ng. Our email education at kdsg.gov.ng or education.kdsg at gmail.com. Our YouTube channel Ministry of Education Kaduna State. Our Twitter handle at Kaduna underscore MOE or our Facebook page, Ministry of Education, Kaduna State. Stay safe, stay at home, and learn well. Thank you, happy listening, and happy viewing. Hello, learners and viewers out there. You are most welcome to yet another segment of e-learning on the subject Christian Religious Studies. In life, we offend one another. And once you happen to offend a friend or even your parents, my dear learners, you tend to see that the relationship between you and your father has been destroyed or has been marred. And you will not be happy, your parents will not be happy. And so there is need for them to forgive you and there is need for you to equally go and ask for forgiveness. Now, if we look at the life of Joshua as we have treated in our last lesson, we learned how Joseph was mistreated by his brothers, but by the time these brothers appeared before Joseph after some years, Joseph did not look at the offense to be anything. He had already forgiven his brothers. And so by the time they appeared before him, instead of Joseph to revenge, Joseph never did. He forgave his brothers. Despite the fact that the brothers were afraid of him, Joseph did not revenge. And he went ahead to serve them as he should as a child. So students out there, Today, we are going to look at the topic forgiveness. Forgiveness. And this issue is found in a book called the book of Philemon. Now, let us define forgiveness. Forgiveness is to pardon or to let go an offense that has been committed. It is to Waste any negative feeling or desire for punishment. If you have been offended, there is need for you to forgive. And once you have forgiven, it is expected that you should forget. Now, there are people out there that will say they will forgive, but to forget about the issue is difficult. Yes, it is difficult. But the issue I want us to understand here is that if you have forgiven and forgotten, by the time you meet with that person, you will not remember the issue. Even when you remember the issue, you won't have any pain in you. For example, 
We all have scars on our bodies. You were wounded one time and you have been healed. So as at the time you look at the healed wound, you tend to see that you are not feeling any pain. So that is how forgiveness and forgetfulness should be in our lives. And we are supposed to live a life of forgiveness so that we don't carry one another in our hearts all the time. So forgiveness is central in the teachings of Jesus. The disciples were taught by Jesus how to pray. Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. And in the process of teaching them how to pray, he included the issue of forgiveness. That is to tell all students that forgiveness is very, very important or paramount in our lives. Now, forgiveness is only possible when we forgive those who sin against us. My students out there, if you remember the Lord's Prayer, there is a place that says, Forgive me my sins as I have forgiven others who have sinned against me. That means if you refuse to forgive others, you are not going to be forgiven. So forgiveness is very, very important. Now, Paul re-emphasized forgiveness in most of his teachings because it involves the ability to tolerate and accommodate one another regardless of their moral weaknesses. My students out there, if you have forgiven, Paul is telling us here that we should forget about the matter as a whole. Don't look at that friend to be somebody that has just offended you. Or you might share with a friend and you might say, I have forgiven her, I don't hold her, I'm not holding her in my mind, but the moment I see her, it's like she has just offended me. Now, students out there, it means you've not done anything. If you have forgiven and you happen to see that person again, you should not remember the, the, the offense with pains, but you should be able to greet when that person's greet. Or you should be able to even hug when that person offer you his or her hand to even shake. So forgiveness is very, very important. Now, forgiveness produces reconciliation and a mark of new life in Christ. You see, forgiveness is part of new life in Christ. You cannot say you are a follower or a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ and you are holding somebody at heart. You are keeping malice. That is not a good disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. So once you have forgiven, reconciliation should be there. You should be able to reconcile yourselves so that your relationship will continue. Paul's letter to Philemon opened with a congratulatory message and encouragement to Philemon because of his faith in Christ and love for the saints. Philemon contributed a lot to the growth of Christianity in his lifetime. You see, Paul was a preacher and he was trying to intervene in an issue between a master and a slave. Now, who were Paul? Philemon and Onesimus. I want us to look at these three people. Paul, Onesimus, and Philemon. Who was Paul? Paul was a good preacher. Paul was a saint. And he was one of the good writers of the New Testament books. Now, Paul was preaching and Philemon was equally a preacher. And it means in our various churches today, we have senior pastor and junior one. So that was the situation between Paul and Philemon. Then who was Onesimus? Onesimus was a slave or a servant to Philemon, who was a preacher. Now, why did Paul write Philemon and what happened? Now, in the course of living, Philemon and Onesimus had a problem. What was the problem? Onesimus, who was a servant to Philemon, stole something from Philemon. 
and he did not go to tell his master that he was sorry. What did he do? He ran away. When he ran away, in the book of Philemon, we learn that he met with Paul in prison. Now, Paul, who was in prison, met with Onesimus. And when they met, Onesimus, who had offended his master, Paul wanted to bring the two of them together. You see, Paul, as a senior pastor, would have just kept Onesimus under his custody, having realized that Onesimus was a changed man. But no, he didn't. What did he do? He took his pen to write to his master, who was Philemon. Now, he, Paul, why did he write, as I've earlier said? That is, he, Paul, wanted to make it known to Philemon that he met with his servant Onesimus while in prison. He did not just hear, Paul did not just hear about Onesimus, but they met face to face. He saw him and talked to him. And Philemon, who was there in Colossae, Paul was in Rome. He had to write him a letter. Now, he, Paul, who wrote this letter, he affirmed or assured him, that is Philemon, that the slave or servant who was, Phil who was Onesimus was no more a thief, but a changed person in the Lord. You see, even our armed robbers today that have been taken to prison, we tend to see that there are people that visit them, even their relations visit them. Now, the purpose of visit them is to make them understand their mistakes and turn back and come back to their right senses, to live well. Nobody will give back to a child, and that child happens to be an armed robber or a thief. In fact, it is not a good thing. So it is always good that such people should come back to God, who is the forgiver of all sins. So, Paul make it known to Philemon that he had met with his servant, and this servant of his, whom he had known to be a thief, is no more a thief. He had preached to him, and he had accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal savior, so there was that need for him to return Onesimus to his master, Philemon. Now, what did he do again? He appealed to Philemon not only to forgive, but also to receive Onesimus as a brother in Christ. You see, Christ is the center of Christianity. Now, if he is truly, Paul made it known to Philemon that if truly he is a worker of the Lord Jesus Christ, then he should receive his servant as a brother, not a thief, not even a slave, but as a brother, as he would treat his brother, even his biological brother, let him treat that his former slave as a brother in the Lord. does that, honestly, there will be peace. You see, in the world today, if we can only forgive one another, the world would be a very good place to live in. But because there is one offense or the other that people must have offended one another, that is why today there is no peace. Another point here is that he had a strong conviction to send Onesimus back to his Master, he has now reconciled them. Let him not keep him under his custody, but let him go back and meet his master. Even our parents, 
if you happen to have intervened in a situation of a child and a parent, you should be able to make the father know that this is his child and he needs to receive that child back to himself again. Why is it that if a child has offended, that child cannot call any other person father but his biological father? So there is need. Parents and students out there, we need to forgive one another in order to have a right relationship with God and with one another. And God is definitely going to reward us. Now, another point that I want us to look at here is that Paul was ready to pay back whatever Onesimus must have taken away from him. Ah, what a master. What a reconciler. He was returning this slave back to his master, but was equally ready to pay back whatever this slave must have taken away from his master Philemon, and he said, put it in my account, I will pay it. You see, if our leaders of today can stand the gap, you know, the difference between us, the rich and the poor, will be negligible. But because there is selfishness, that is why you find out that you can easily identify a poor man, an offender, from any other person. So, students out there, there is need for us to forgive one another. And I know there are times you students, if friends are into conflict, some of you will just pack stand and say, hey, let us see who is strong among you. Whoever that happens to be the son first, you tend to see that you claim that that person is the strongest. It should not be. Don't encourage conflict. Don't back your friends. Even if your friend is very strong and you know he can beat up that other friend, don't encourage that friend to do that because it is not good before us men and even before God. Paul equally in his letter wrote that there is need for an honest, I mean for Philemon, to receive or welcome Onesimus back as he will receive him, Paul, or he will welcome him, Paul. Paul had reconciled them, and he was returning Onesimus back to his master. You see, he wrote this letter, that is Paul, and gave Onesimus to take this letter of reconciliation or forgiveness to his master Philemon. And he said he should welcome his slave, who was no more a slave now, but a changed man, as he will welcome him, Paul. So I tend to see that Philemon should have no record of any bad debt against his servant. He should receive him as he will receive Paul, who was his senior in the vineyard of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul equally wrote, prepare a guest room, hoping to pay them a visit. That's follow up. In Paul's letter, he wrote Philemon, that, that as Onesimus is coming back to you again as a changed person, I want you to prepare a guest room for me, Paul. I am coming. So I tend to see that Paul wanted to actually see the relationship between Onesimus and his master, Philemon, to find out whether he had, or he had really forgiven him. Now, students out there, if really you have forgiven your friend, and your friend happens to be on the road and you meet, and that friend says, ah, Grace, where are you going? Say, I'm going to the market if you're really forgiven. But if you have, you've not forgiven, in fact, you try to find your, another way. Or you might not say, what's your business with me? Leave me alone. It is not good. So you try to see that Paul, who reconciled Philemon and his servant, sent him back 
and wanted to equally be there in Philemon's house to see how they will relate. That is follow up. Even in our various churches today, our leaders need to follow up. If somebody has committed or has accepted Christ as his Lord and personal Savior, there is need for us to guide these ones that are very, very young in the faith so that they will not go back. So students out there, forgiveness is a very, very good thing. It can make you to keep malice with one another, which is not good. Now, reasons for Paul's letter to Philemon continue. Paul should do more than what Paul, Philemon, sorry, should do more than what Paul had beckoned him. He should do more than that. Not only accepting him, keeping him in his room and just forget about him. No, he should involve him even in the ministry. Let him not think, ah, he had over, ever offended me, so let him just stay there. No, he should do more than all that Paul enlisted in his letter. Then finally, you tend to see that the whole book of Philemon is talking about forgiveness. If you look at the story very well, it is talking about forgiveness, the whole book of Philemon. So there are times, even in our OBJs, they will tell you, they will ask you to tell what the book of Philemon is centered on. So the book of Philemon is not centered on love, is not centered on, any, on anything but forgiveness. So you tend to see that forgiveness in Christianity and in life is very, very important. So learners out there, in our lesson today, we have, we have defined forgiveness. We have said forgiveness is very, very important. We need to live with one another. We need to show love to one another. We need to forgive and forget whatever offense that has, must have been committed by any friend, by any child, or even parents to their children. There is need to forgive. Then we came to see how the relationship of a master and a servant. A servant, being Onesimus, offended his master Instead of him to beg for forgiveness, he ran away. But as God will have it, God arrested him. He met with the senior pastor, who was Paul. And when Paul preached to Onesimus, he realized that Onesimus has changed. And what did he do? He did not want to keep Onesimus under his custody, but rather he wanted to still go back to that his former place. And he listed the items that he wanted Philemon to do if he has really forgiven Onesimus. And at the end of it, he even said he was going to visit them. So let Philemon prepare a guest room for him to follow up the case. You know? Then, at the end of it, he took the letter to him and forgiveness actually took place. The relationship that was the main thing that Paul wanted between Philemon and his servant Onesimus. So, before I leave students out there, I have an assignment for you. And this assignment is not only for you to put it down, but you should actually practice it. Because forgiveness is very, very important. By the time you practice it, you know, it will become part and parcel of you. And even if this question happens to come out in an exam, you'll be able to write it well. So, the assignment goes like this. Question 1A. How did Paul use the case of Onesimus to explain the meaning and need for forgiveness? Paul wrote this letter to make Philemon see the need of forgiving his servant, to bring him back, to bring their former relationship, even more than that, to the glory of God. And question 1b says, 
write two lessons you have learned from the episode. The assignment that I have for you, students out there, question 1a says, how did Paul use the case of Onesimus to explain the meaning and need for forgiveness? Question 1b, write two lessons you have learned from the episode. And of course, I know you have learned a lot. Then, the references that I use for this write-up, number one is the Bible. If you take your Bible, go straight to the book of Philemon. You will see the story very, very well there. And the points that are not even here, you will see them there. The other reference is a textbook. And this textbook is called Roundup for SS3 classes. And the authors are A. E. Izuchuku, V. C. Ama, and A. A. Adeinka. These are the authors of the Roundup textbook. And you tend to see that the Roundup contains the work of SS1, SS2, and SS3. When you get this textbook, you use it effectively. Then, my name is Asebe David Ndagjana, and my contact is 080-77251542. I repeat it again. My name is Asebe David Ndagjana. My contact is 080 I'm waiting for your questions and your response. My students out there, stay home, stay safe, and keep learning. Thank you.